Hi, and we're back with yet another database for you all, and I am super excited to show you the beta release of MySQL. Yes, really, MySQL, it's here in beta, and I wanna give you a quick sneak peek. I'm gonna to go to the data tab here, and I'm gonna choose the connect database button, and here I'm going to go right up to MySQL, not Postgres today, and gonna to go ahead and hit connect existing database. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and give mine a name. I'm gonna be using a Chinook database. I'll just call mine Chinook to kind of uh, map with the convention, and I'm gonna paste in my connection string. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and say connect database. What's happening is Hasura is gonna go out and introspect that query, that, that database, look at the schema, figure out all the tables, and then it's gonna look at all the relationships across those tables as well. It'll allow me to track those individual tables as root fields, and then it will allow me to go ahead and track the relationships as GraphQL relationships. In that process, what we actually get is a auto-generated GraphQL API. So let's go ahead and have a connect uh, look at this. I'm gonna click on Chinook, and we'll see that it's found all of my tables inside of the database. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, click on this little checkbox here and say track selected, and that's gonna give me a bunch of these uh, root fields. And now when I click on the uh, relationships or the foreign keys here, I'm gonna go ahead and track all of those as well. I could modify these, customize their behaviors or how they're called. I'm gonna go ahead and say, just uh, track them all as sort of their base approach and zoop. We actually have a GraphQL API on MySQL right now. Like really, let's go ahead and have a quick look over at the API tab here. And we can see that uh, if you're used to graphical, you can see that it's already validating. We have a schema here, but let's have a quick play around. We're gonna go ahead and do something like album. We'll drop down an album, look at artist, uh, and we can continue down the row of having all of our data. Super cool, super quick, and it's finally here, uh, and that's great. Well, and before we go any further, I actually wanna take a moment to explain to you what's happening here with this query. If you're new to GraphQL, this is the part that you're gonna to wanna to watch, and GraphQL is sort of a special query language as well as a specification for the runtime of how that language gets uh, processed and what it's supposed to do underneath the hood. I know that's a lot to take in, so let's go ahead and talk about the part of GraphQL that you've probably seen, and that is the GraphQL query language. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in a sample query here, and we're gonna have a look at what's happening. All right, what I have here is a GraphQL query, and this is how we do our reads from a GraphQL server. You've got, in this case, we've started with the artist here, and we're passing in an input to limit that by three, and then we are requesting the related data. This would be like a join here for the albums, also limited by the top three and then each album, we're gonna get the, the limited uh, by three tracks of those albums. And when we do that, we'll also pass in requests for the aggregate data. Now, this aggregate data is being handled for us automatically by the Hasura server. Hasura is going to actually implement the GraphQL server specification in a way that when I make this query, that's coming through and it's getting compiled to SQL. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll see that when I run this query, I'm getting the data back from the server. Now that's extremely helpful and instead of me having to learn how to write SQL or even if I'm doing multiple different kinds of databases, having to learn what each of those databases is wanting, I can use this single query syntax as a way to descriptively define the rest of my data layer. Now, if, again, if you're new to GraphQL, we go beyond just queries and we can actually go for things like mutations, which is how we're gonna be handling our updates and deletes. I'm gonna paste in a mutation here for creating a customer inside of my media library. This is a way to insert a user. I'm gonna go ahead and just run this. And when I do that, we'll see the response now is actually gonna be the customer ID. And this is a great way to be able to both read from, update, and be able to insert new content in my database. And again, it's really worth adding in here that one of the powerful pieces here is that I'm not actually having to learn a new type of SQL or learning a new database's special syntax. As long as Hasura is able to connect to it, in this case, MySQL, I'm able to insert data, update data, delete data, read data, anything that you would expect to be able to do with your database, I can do now through permissions and with caching and all the other kind of performances you would expect from a GraphQL server.
Okay, that's the GraphQL bits. Let's have a look at the rest of the platform. Now, if you're new to Hasura and you're, you're a MySQL person, I wanna go ahead and show you a few more cool tricks that Hasura can do that'll actually speed up your API development time across multiple data sources. To do that, I'm gonna bring in another database, a Postgres database in this case, but create a relationship between Postgres and MySQL, which will allow us to have a federated API across these data sources. I'm gonna to go to my data tab here, and the database that I'm bringing in is representative of like user data. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, connect this existing database. And in this case, I'm gonna just grab an environment variable. And this one's gonna be called playbacks because it's sort of representing playback data. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that playback DB URL here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just hit connect database. And with that, again, it's gonna go out, find the schema. It's gonna see what I have. I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna go ahead and uh, track all of the tables that you find here as well. When I do that, it's gonna then again introspect and find all of the uh, foreign keys and build out the rest of my API. So tables are tracked, foreign keys are now tracked, and now we have two separate APIs on top of two different databases inside of one GraphQL API. Now what I wanna do is actually make that bridge we talked about. So I'm gonna to go to this uh, playbacks table and I'm gonna build a relationship from Postgres to MySQL and I'm gonna say add a relationship. And in this case, I'm gonna call this a track info. And that track info is going to allow me to go ahead and connect to the Chinook uh, track uh, table. And when I do that, I'm gonna say this is an object relationship. It's gonna be from the song ID of my playback going to this uh, track ID of the, uh, of the Chinook database. Hit create relationship. And now when I come back to the API, if we go ahead and actually browse this from the playbacks uh, side of things, if we go to playbacks, we can look and, and see that we actually have this uh, track info immediately available to us with track album and all the rest of our GraphQL data. So that's really powerful for databases. We have the ability to connect two different databases, MySQL with Postgres, Fantastic, uh, but like not all of my data sources are databases. What maybe I have uh, REST APIs, maybe I have an existing GraphQL API, and we can bring those into our server as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up to my remote schema here, and I'm gonna bring in my CMS. I'm gonna go ahead and say add a remote schema. In this case, I'm just gonna call mine my CMS, and I'm gonna go ahead and use an environment variable here called my CMS URL and it happens to be living at the uh, GraphQL path of my, my server. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, this looks good. Add that remote schema. And we have an error because I have name collisions. Well, we can actually handle that here inside of Hasura as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, add uh, GQL customization. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and provide a, a namespace as well as a prefix to my fields. So when I do this, this will actually go ahead and allow me to add that remote schema without the conflicts. So if we head back over to my API now, we'll actually have a look and see that our CMS data is, is living alongside the rest of our, of our data. And you can also build a lot of relationships between a lot of the data sources we support and those remote schemas as well. So you can really build out a very rich API very quickly by using these primitives. Now that's good for remote schemas and good for databases, but now let's have a look at those REST requests I was telling you about. I'm gonna to go to my actions tab here. And I'm gonna add in a, a action and I'm gonna fill it out and we'll talk about what it's doing. All right, so now we have this action created here and what we've done is we've gone ahead and defined what we wanna call this inside of our mutations uh, root field. We've gone ahead and defined the typed response. We've gone ahead and given it the location of where it exists. So again, a, a environment variable plus the uh, path where it lives on my server. And I've modified the payload to say that I wanna use a post request when I, when I send this request. Um, that will expose it on my API and you, you see that we're not actually showing clear text environment variables because security for the win. Uh, that actually now brings in a REST request into my API. So I'd be able to actually make a call to my microservice or whatever it might be from my GraphQL API in a single place. Well, great, we've got the ability to bring in multiple data sources, merge them all together, have federation. 
let's look at one of the other magical components of the Hasura uh, tool in here and we'll actually have a look at permissions. To do that, we're gonna head over to the data tab and I'm gonna to go to my playbacks table here. And under playbacks, we're gonna to go to permissions and I'm gonna create a new role here called user. And that role will have a select permission with a custom check. What's gonna happen here is I'm gonna say that uh, if the user ID of that row is gonna be matching to or equal to the incoming XSura user ID, this is something from a JWT or something of that nature, we'll go ahead and give them access to either all the columns or maybe limit some of the columns they can see. We hit save permissions and now we've actually built in a really powerful system here where we've been able to define permissions at this configuration level. Because that's actually a critical piece of the Hasura story, is that while we bring in all these data sources, what Hasura does is it actually knows how to make calls, native calls, to these underlying data sources. In the case of MySQL, it's making MySQL uh, queries against the MySQL database. When it's uh, calling to Postgres, it's calling Postgres queries against the Postgres database, REST requests, all of the other, uh, all of the above. And when we bring in a GraphQL query to the engine, it's breaking that down into what the underlying data sources are actually looking for, meaning I don't have to write any resolvers, meaning I don't have to be maintaining any resolvers. It allows me to think about the models of my data, not about the specific ways that I have to fetch each individual resource. I can think about the edges and not about the actual implementation details. Well, that's great for all the data layer sort of ecosystem and building out the connections, but Hasura GraphQL SQL Engine brings a lot more to the party. We have the monitoring tab to actually look at the incoming requests and be able to find the slow queries. We have the ability to limit by allow lists. We can limit by uh, nested depths. We can actually limit by the amount of queries per second. And we have the ability to lock down every single part of the Hasura API into a performant, secure API that you get out of the box with just a couple of clicks. All right, that's it for the whirlwind tour of the MySQL beta launch. We hope you're excited about it as we are. We know it's been a long time coming and we're excited to see what you're going to build with Hasura on MySQL in production and let us know at the community calls. Let us know on Discord and we'll see you around. Bye.